One of the main reasons original YOLO algorithm took the world by storm in 2015 was its ability to run object detection in real time. Today, I will use the latest iteration of that algorithm, YOLO v8, to build and run simple object counting application on my webcam stream. This video is actually part three of the series where we use PIP package supervision to build different kinds of video analytics applications. So if you are interested in the rest of those videos, click the link in the description or in the card in the top right corner. Now, without further ado, let's get our hands dirty. Okay, so we start an empty directory and the first thing we'll do is create Python virtual environment. We activate it and after that we install the first dependency we need, Ultralytics. It is a package that contains YOLO v8 model. Internally it installs heavy dependencies like PyTorch, so the whole installation process might take a while. So far so good, let's try to use YOLO CLI to test whether or not the installation finished properly. We see that the model weights are being downloaded. And after a few seconds we see live video stream with bounding boxes. The performance of the model is really good, we loaded large version of the model and we still get inference after just a little bit over 10 milliseconds. The one thing that is a bit weird is the oscillation of the bounding boxes, but we'll try to fix that later. Now let's try to recreate the same effect without CLI, but using Python SDK. CLI is perfect when you just want to make something quickly and simply. However, the moment that you need to do something custom, like in our case, build a small application to count objects within the zone, you need to use SDK. Before we start, make sure to like and subscribe, hit the bell button, make sure that you will know first about tutorials like this in the future. First thing first, we'll create empty Python file, create main function, we'll pass for now, and we'll run that function if we'll run the whole file as a standalone script. Now let's add simple hello to the main function and run it in the terminal just to confirm that everything works as expected and sure it is. Now let's access the webcam. The first thing we will do is import CV2. Now in main function we will create a video capture with uh, video device index zero. So if you go to the terminal and ls everything in dev directory and grab by video, you will see that there are multiple video devices. We will access the one with zero index. So let's create while loop and read the frame inside that particular loop. And just to test, we'll im show the current frame and let's also allow for exiting the while loop. So if I will press escape, the while loop will break. Cool. There are two integers we use in this line. The first one, 30, is the amount of milliseconds that OpenCV will wait for us until we will hit any key on the keyboard. And 27, which is the integer that represents escape button in ASCII table. Now I will run the script and just after a few seconds I can access the webcam. You can see I can wave the hand over here. We see it on the screen. The one thing that is a little bit weird is the resolution of the video. That uh, webcam should have higher resolution. Okay, so let's try to fix that. The first thing I will do is I will comment the breaking mechanism. I will print the shape of current frame and break regardless. Now, if we run it in the terminal, we'll see the current resolution and it is 640 by 400. Uh, that webcam should be able to run in higher resolution. So let's try to make it configurable. So I'll import arc parse and create new function, parse arguments. Uh, that function will take no arguments, but it will return arc parse namespace. Uh, we will now create a new arc parser and name it YOLO v8 life. 
now we can add a first argument uh, and let's call it a webcam resolution that will be a list of uh, int values and it is a resolution so we will have only two values in the list and let's also create a default value for example 1280 by 720 now let's break the lines to make it a little bit more cleaner and readable and after that argument is being passed we will parse arcs and return them from the function now we can go to main and call that function so that we can use uh, that resolution now uh, let's use a cv2 set um, to select the resolution of our webcam so we need to set width and height of the frame uh, we will unpack our list right after we parse the arguments so we will get frame width and frame height from arcs web cam resolution and we will pass those values in our set functions now if we'll run that script in the terminal we'll see that the frame resolution have been updated so we can uncomment our uh, loop breaking logic and we should be able to see the webcam stream exactly you see me waving over here now we are ready to plug in the yolo model a few minutes ago we used YOLO CLI to run the model from the terminal and that command took a argument called model with value YOLO V8 LPT and this is the name of weights that uh, were passed to the model. So let's do the same but in the SDK. So I'll start by importing YOLO from Ultralytics and then create a model instance and pass the same model weights name as an argument, so YOLO V8 LPT. Now inside the while loop, I will infer on current frame. So let's do results equals model on current frame and run it in terminal. And after a few seconds, I see current frame, uh, but I don't see any detections. But when I take a look in the terminal, I see that for the given frame, we detected one cup, one apple, and one scissors, which is just about the content that we would expect. Printing detected objects in terminal is cool, but it would be even cooler if we would be able to draw bounding boxes on the frame. So let's install supervision and annotate our video stream. Before we can use supervision utilities, we need to install supervision as our next dependency. And after that is done, we can import supervision as SV in our script and create the instance of bounding box annotator. We will pass thickness of the line, thickness of the text and the text scale. And inside the while loop below model inference, we'll convert YOLO V8 results into supervision detections and use them to annotate the current frame. So we will call bounding box annotator, annotate, pass current frame as seen, detections as detections and run the script in the terminal. Looks like we need to select the first element from returned list and run the script once again. And after a few seconds, we should see the first frame of the stream along with the bounding boxes and probabilities. I guess it would be cool to map those detections into concrete classes detected by the model. So let's do that. Bounding box annotator annotate method can take additional optional argument called labels. 
to parse them will loop over detections inside the list comprehension. Every entry is a tuple that contains confidence and class ID, among other things. Now we'll use string formatting and map class ID into class name using the dict stored inside the model under names property. Like previously, we'll also plot confidence rounded to the second digit after the comma. Now we can pass our parsed labels as additional argument and rerun the script in the terminal. And after a few seconds, we will hopefully see a frame. Yeah, a frame from stream with bounding boxes and the class names, cool. Now we can get a bit more creative and use our detections to build a bit more complicated video analytics system. We start by defining a zone polygon in the form of NumPy array. So in our case, it will be a rectangle that will occupy the left side of the screen. We actually have a separate tutorial showing you how to define the geometry of the polygon. You can find it in the description and in the tab in the top right corner. Right after while loop, we will define an instance of polygon zone. We will use our geometry as the polygon argument and we will pass also a frame resolution. We are in lag because we get that resolution as one of the arguments from arc parser. On top of that, we create an instance of zone annotator. This is the class that we use specifically to draw zones on the frame. So to create that instance, we need to pass the instance of zone, define the color that we would like to use for annotation. And now inside the while loop, we can first of all trigger the zone. And second of all, annotate the frame with our zone. So we pass the frame as the scene and we are more or less ready to test our solution. After a few seconds, uh, the model gets loaded and we see the view from the camera. Uh, it looks like we messed up something in the zone definition. It occupies almost the whole screen instead of the half, but the counting works properly. So let's go back to the editor and fix the zone. Yeah, obviously we used incorrect values for the width. Um, yeah, sorry, only for the width. And we can now rerun the script. Like always, we need to wait a little bit for the model to load. Yeah, and right now uh, the zone only occupies the half of the screen. Uh, there are only scissors in the zone. Now it's apple and scissors, two objects. Cool. Okay, now time for some improvements. Let's reformat polygons annotator a little bit and add the thickness of the line, thickness of the text and text scale to make the counter a little bit larger because it was quite hard to see with all the things going on on the scene. So let's rerun the script once again. Oh yeah, it's, it's a lot better. Uh, we can clearly see the number right now. Uh, the next thing that I would like to fix is the fact that uh, the person class, when I'm uh, grabbing something, is visible. So let's uh, filter person out. Uh, we can do it easily uh, with the uh, pandas-like syntax. Let's rerun once again. And now when I'm grabbing stuff, no. The person class is not visible. I can take all that stuff out. I can put the apple and the person class is not interfering with the counter. That's a lot cleaner than before. Great. Now I decided to mix things a little bit and bring new objects to the scene. So let's take a look how our script is performing with apples and oranges. So let's restart the script and bring few new actors to our scene. Okay, so like I said, orange, apple, so far so good. 
uh, a little bit of weird behavior uh, when the apples are close to each other. Now we are getting a little bit of weird stuff. Uh, the orange is oscillating between orange and apple class. What we saw there was actually not oscillation between two different classes, it was double detection. That means that single object created two bounding boxes with two different classes. We can prevent that from happening by using global NMS, non-max suppression. In short, that means that whenever we would get double detection and the intersection over union of two bounding boxes would be sufficiently high enough, even when those two bounding boxes are from two different classes, we will get rid of one of them, the one with lower confidence. We can add additional argument to our inference logic. This one is called agnostic NMS, and we set it to true. And when we rerun the script and the model is loaded into memory, we see that we no longer experience double detection, although our orange is mostly detected as apple. But from the counter perspective, it's actually much better because we see the correct uh, number of items in the zone. We are almost done. There's one more thing that I would like to change. So you most likely noticed that we pretty much hard-coded the definition of our polygon zone. Uh, and it works pretty fine when we use the same uh, frame resolution. But if we would pass different frame resolution, the size of the zone would be, for example, significantly larger than the whole frame. So I'd say it would be pretty cool to go from hard-coded definition to a relative definition and recalculate the size of the zone after we start the script. First thing first, let's test our hypothesis. So we can use our webcam resolution argument to pass different values, uh, for example, 640 by 360, run the script, load the model, and we see that the zone is basically only half visible and it occupies the whole frame. Uh, we see only portion of the counter. Uh, so let's fix that. Like I said, we can remove the hard-coded values and introduce relative ones. I want my zone to have the half of the width of the frame and the full height of the frame. Consequentially, we need to recalculate the real size of the polygon. So we pick our relative dimensions and uh, multiply them by the frame resolution uh, converted into NumPy array. And all of that needs to be casted to int. And now we can uh, take that uh, value and inject it into polygon zone. Okay, let's run the script uh, with uh, the smaller resolution and it works beautifully. So right now our zone is uh, recalculated uh, to feed the resolution of the frame. I want to do one more experiment, which is manipulate our script to only count apples in the zone. So basically discard objects from any other class. It should be pretty easy to do that. There's only one small change that we need to do in our filtering logic. So instead of discarding people, we need to discard any object that is not class 47, which is Apple. So when we run the script, that's exactly what is happening. We only detect Apple. So despite of the fact that we have oranges in our zone, we only count Apple objects. So right now we don't have any Apple in the zone, but we have two oranges. Right now there is nothing. Right now, there is a single apple, and two apples, and three, and so on. Boy, that turned out to be a pretty long video. I have a lot of respect for you if you are still here. Uh, I hope that you learned something today, as I did. Uh, it's just playing with the live video stream and tweaking the script to add one more functionality, and I just couldn't stop myself from doing one more and one more. Still, I hope that all those people who are asking about live uh, webcam tutorial for Yolo V8 are satisfied. If you find that video useful, make sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more computer vision content coming to this channel soon. My name is Peter. Bye.